the reciprocal of A. What's the absolute value of n over n plus 1? Weber. to why they shrunk from surrounding everything to just sur the last term. The last term is the only one that could be negative. Oh, oh okay. So I basically broke them out yeah. because I knew they were positive. All right. <clears throat> so now the actual, uh, the ratio test says take a limit of this when n approaches infinity. And remember, this is going to be labeled as rho or P, however you like to think of this.
All right, now this is a pre-calculus pre calculus one problem. What can I take out of this limit? The three -fifths and x Definitely three-fifths, and I can take the x minus four variable. Why is it OK for me to take the variable out of this limit? It's a different variable. If this is the x limit, that would be very bad. But this is a n limit, so what I circle it is constant. So I'm going to take this outside. So when I write constant, I don't mean constant overall, but constant as far as that limit is concerned. So at this point, you should be able to handle this limit pretty easily. What is the limit as n gets really big of n over n plus 1? Not zero. One. One. So you can look at high powers, or you can use uh, L'Hopital's rule, derivative, it would be infinity over infinity, derivative would give you one over one. So lots of ways to do that limit. Uh, I'm not going to go over them. It's all going to make it, uh, <coughs> that limit will be one. Of course, this is rho. All right, when would this converge? What type of rho values? make this converge. Rho is small less than 1. All right, so this is rho right here. This is rho. So when what I just underlined is less than 1, it converges. So we are almost there. You can tell, you could tell way earlier what x value this was centered at, not centered at zero. What x value is this series centered at? It's centered at four. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna solve for the absolute value part. We're gonna solve for that x minus four absolute value. So super easy, all I do is multiply by five thirds. You should be always multiplying by a positive number because you're multiplying by things that came out of the absolute value. So if you find yourself multiplying by something negative, you probably messed up the absolute value uh, portion of the problem. So multiply by that. We have x minus 4 absolute value is less than 1 times 5 thirds, which is 5 thirds. So there are a few ways to think about this. Let's see some of the, I think the best way algebraically, if we want to think about this, the way I would uh, deal with this algebraically. If x minus 4 is positive, this means x minus 4 is, great, uh, is less than 5 thirds. Or if, so this is, uh, if x minus 4 is positive, we have this inequality that I just wrote. If x minus 4 is negative, Absolute value is the same as multiplying by negative 1. So algebraically, it would look like this. So either that x minus 4 is less than 5 thirds, or negative x minus 4 is less than 5 thirds. And now multiply by a negative 1. Flip your inequality, uh, negative 5 thirds. I like to put the small thing on the left. We can combine these two together into one inequality. So I broke the absolute value into two inequalities, and then I did some algebra, and I'm going to combine the back into one inequality. If you Think about absolute value carefully, you could actually go right down to that bottom step right there. So if the absolute value of that is less than 5 thirds, that means it's either less than 5 thirds or greater than negative 5 thirds. So it's possible to skip right to that last step. I'm going to give you an, a geometric way to think about this in a minute. 
Uh, but let's finish this off. How do I solve for x? It's very easy to do now. How do I solve for x? Plus 4. x only has one friend left over. It's the minus 4. So get rid of it with the plus 4. So add 4 to each. So we're going to have 4 minus 5 thirds. No reason to add fractions if you don't have to. Less than 4 plus 5 thirds. All right, so this inequality is a little ugly to look at. I'm going to graph it on a number line. We already said it was centered at 4. How far do I go to the left and right? 5 thirds. So 5 thirds to the left, 5 thirds to the right. So we get to go 5 thirds this way, and then 5 thirds the other way. Uh, there's, you could convert 4 into 12 thirds, but I'm just going to write this as 4 minus 5 thirds and 4 plus 5 thirds. All right, what is the radius? 5 thirds. So if you think of this as a, a width, half the width is 5 thirds. So let's look back a couple steps and see when I could have said what the radius was. What step could I have said what the radius was? You could, technically you could tell at the first step on the board. However, the one I recommend you look at is right here. So you can see the radius here. Uh, well, when I say here, I'm really pointing to the right side of this inequality over there. So when you have like x, but it doesn't matter like what. So when you have like x, but there's no like power or multiplication. Yep. Sometimes Sometimes you may have to uh, square root it if it's something weird is happening. Uh, so it may be like the square root of 5 thirds, for example. Uh, so yeah, it won't always necessarily be this straightforward. But basically, when you solve, you will have solved for absolute value of x minus a. In our, our case, a was uh, uh, 4. So we've solved for basically a, the if you look, you'll pretty much see that right away. You're basically going to solve for that right there. OK, so when you solve for x minus a, you're going to be looking right at the radius at that point. So that's how you find your radius. What do we do after we found the radius? I can almost say what the interval is, but what is preventing me from so I got to decide endpoints. Is it open or closed on the left, open or closed on the right? So let's do the uh, left first. So it's going to be x equals 4 minus 5 thirds. Let's not reduce it yet. Remember, only mess with fractions when you have to. So only go common denominator when you're basically forced to. So I'm going to plug this in. Our original was summation n equals 0 to infinity. x minus 4 to the n, 3 to n. So I'm going to carefully, well, there should be only one place where x appears. So there shouldn't be set, you know, four places where you're plugging this in. If it's a power series, x should appear exactly once. So now I'm carefully plugging in uh, 4 minus 5 thirds. And there's another, that minus 4 gets brought down. Now, one thing you should notice if you've done this correctly, usually at the endpoints, there's significant cancellation. So for example, in this one, the 4 and the minus 4 cancel out right there. 
and we just have negative 5 thirds to the n, 3 to the n over n times 5 to the n. Uh, I will allow you to be lazy and not write the beginning and ending for your sum, as long as it's written out somewhere in your problem. They're almost always going to be 0 to infinity. So uh, you don't have to write that out every time, but I should see it written enough so I know exactly what the, uh, it's going from 0 to infinity. All right, we got some algebra to do. So let's deal with the uh, negative 5 thirds to the n. So I can write this as, there's a few ways to write it. I'm going to write it as negative 1 times 5 over 3. So that's negative 5 thirds. And there's basically three things being multiplied together. You could leave the negative attached to the 5, but I'm going to make it separate. Now, I did what's called distributing the power. You can do that. You can distribute the power if you're multiplying and dividing. Do not distribute your power if you're adding and subtracting. All right, what can I cancel now? So three, divide by 3 to the n, multiply 3 to the n, and multiply by 5 to the n, divide by 5 to the n. So this is actually pretty nice. So at this point, it's simplified. I'm going to fill in, oops, somewhere I should not have started this series at 0 because I would have been divided by 0, but we'll start it at 1. All right. So take a minute and decide if this converges or diverges, and tell me what test you're going to use to justify that. I'll give you a really big hint. Is this an alternating series? Yes. Yes, yes it is. So we have a test just for alternating series. So check out your cheat sheet, flip back to your textbook, ask your neighbor. I'm not your neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> your neighbor's sitting behind you. <laughs> the most important thing your cheat sheet should have right now is all the tests for convergence. That's what your first quiz is going to cover. You can write them alphabetically, chronologically.
alternate series test, three steps. Does it alternate signs? So that negative one to the end is what causes our series to alternate signs. Uh, the terms get small. Number two feels very similar to the nth term test for divergence. Uh, the little different. Do not get the uh, limit is zero, then you can say it diverges. So it's similar to the nth term test for divergence, but not quite the same. So that these terms do get small. They eventually will uh, get very close to zero. And last up, the terms get smaller than the I know there's a lot of writing. I'm going to try to keep it all on the screen. So I want you to take two minutes, maybe let's take three minutes, and tell me if this converges or diverges. And I'll give you some hints. This series is not going to alternate. So don't, the alternating ser series test is not going to apply here. It'll fail the first condition. Ratio and root test are both going to be inconclusive. So don't go back and use those. You're going to waste your time. There's integral test, there's limit comparison, nth term test for divergence, the regular comparison test. I recommend you use an integral test though. Yeah, we should put this 
like skipping a step, basically, uh, and then take the limit as they approach the infinity. And so you have to know what that limit, the limit of That's the natural the log of infinity. That you are now. No. It's also on, your sheet, on a good cheat sheet that will be on there. All right. You also need to know the limit of ln of infinity. All right, so hopefully you saw the algebra cancel out to just 1 over n. It was almost the exact algebra as before. You just had positive 5 thirds instead of negative 5 thirds. So the only thing different, there's no negative 1 to the n. Uh, so some of you write positive 1 to the n, totally OK. Positive 1 to any power. Uh, i got to be careful. Positive 1 to any uh, numerical power is 1. Except what, positive 1 to the 0, we have, that's an indeterminate form. Something like that. All right, but this is not one of those complicated cases. All right, so if I go with integral test, uh, I'm going to integrate. You can use either x or t, it doesn't matter. I'll go with a 1 over x dx. What are the bounds of integration? 1 to infinity. This is where infinity shows up right here. The first thing you do is an improper integral. So I'm going to use the variable a. So we're going to grade from 1 to a. And then at the end, we'll take our limit. So we're going to do our antiderivative first and our limit second. So derivative, uh, antiderivative 1 over x is ln x. Is that the same thing as uh, x to negative 1? Yes, it is. So what is natural log of a? Oh, what is natural log of 1? Sorry. Zero. So that's 0. That's the easy part. All right, now we could plug in infinity. If you have a good cheat sheet or a good memory, you'll remember what is the natural log of infinity. It's just infinity. All right, so there's, we had to use geometry to prove this. This is not something super easy and obvious to prove. So this is something that should be on your cheat sheet. And then I think we use symmetry. There are two facts on your cheat sheet, or that should be. One of them was limit natural log a uh, when a approaches infinity is infinity. The other one, the other natural log limit, a approaches 0 from the right. Anybody remember this? So, 1? Nope. Negative That would be negative infinity. You basically get the same area, but you're counting it negative. You're going the wrong way. I think it's technically one more than the other area, but when you're dealing with infinity, it's still just infinity. So these, I think these are 7, 2. It should be in our natural log, where natural log was defined somewhere. It's pretty sure that was chapter, maybe it was 7, 3. Natural log was 7, 2. It should be in 7, 2 somewhere. All right, so those should be on your cheat sheet. Yeah, in your natural log calculus rules. All right, there is a way faster way to tell me that this diverges. 
Oh, we didn't even say that this diverges yet. All we did was uh, integral test and got infinity. The integral test says if the integral diverges, the sum or the series diverges. So we got infinity. Thus the series diverges. All right, so that means this endpoint is out. So get rid of that endpoint. It's not going to converge. So I'll scroll back here in a minute, but let me finish the interval we were working on. So we're skipping the endpoint right there, and we get everything in between. So if we write our interval, we have from 4 minus 5 thirds up to 4 plus. Five thirds. You can absolutely go to thirds and add these together. That's fine. But the important thing is you have closed one side, open on the other. You're going to find some series are open both sides, some series are closed both sides, some series are half open, half closed. It all depends. There. And we got a radius right there. All right. Let's go to a way faster way to tell this uh, converges. What series is this? This is a named series. Infinite series? This is an infinite series, but there's a type of infinite series. It's a P series. What power is P? <coughs> 1. So this is a P equals 1 series, divergent. So it's a divergent P equals 1 series. That is enough to justify why this diverges. You can just tell me it's a P equals 1 series and therefore divergent. And you tell that by when you get to that point, if uh, whatever n is to the power, whatever, sorry, component. So I'm going to refer you to the P series in the book well, or your cheat sheet. It looks like this 1 over n to the P. Certain p-values converges, certain other ones diverges. So one thing you should notice, these questions take a while. I don't even know if I can zoom out far enough to fit the whole thing on the board. I don't think I can. So you probably wrote like a page or so of notes for this, something like two and a half. <laughs> so these take quite a bit of time, quite a bit of paper. So you want to make sure that I can read what you're writing. So if things are written in a crazy way, uh, I need to see your, how you got your radius and then how you checked each endpoint. So you want to keep them separate. Uh, if you write messy, you may need to put some dividers in. Let's see. So if I was making dividers here, I could separate my endpoints. Here was my right endpoint. Above it was my left endpoint, so you can separate it out so I can see here's my endpoint, here's my other endpoint, and here's where I got my radius. Uh, somewhere I need to see what test you used. I'm up here, ratio test, so I see ratio test written down. So make sure you name the test you use, and I can follow your work. And you may want to have a couple algebra zones. You can do all your algebra somewhere else, so you just have your first step right here. And then your finalized last step right there. You can do your algebra somewhere else. So you can have a whole page of algebra and then a whole page of basically calculus and logic. We still turn both those in for like yeah, I need, to see, I need to see your algebra reductions and all that. You can't just tell me it converges. Trust me. <laughs> or something like that. Here's my algebra work. Well, the, I can't remember what they're called. They're like, um, the exclamation point things. Factorials. Factorials. Those, like, come in. Sure, absolutely. We got a couple of those coming up. So what I'm going to do is center the rest of the uh, series at zero. It's just one last thing to write. It's not very difficult to center at other numbers. We just did two examples, or one example that was not centered at zero. It's not uh, terribly complicated. So 
Taylor series is the name for all these series. If you are centered at zero, as a special name, it's uh, Maclaurin series. So if you're centered at zero, it's uh, a specific type of Taylor series it's called a Maclaurin series. Is this a new section in the chapter? Nope, the same one. So Maclaurin series is the same thing, just centered at zero. And the rest of the examples we're going to do are all Maclaurin series. I want you to find the radius and the interval of convergence and use the ratio to test on this one. Make sure, be a little extra careful on your AM plus one term. What did I mess up on my AM plus one term here? So I need to make sure I multiply my m plus 1, or properly plug it in there. So it should be multiplied by the 2, the whole thing multiplied by the 2. All right, so use the ratio test. And simplify this down. Make sure you have absolute value on there and pull as much out of the absolute value as you can when you rearrange and reduce. So take a minute to simplify and then apply, once you're done doing algebra, apply the limit to this. Finish this off. The algebra on this one was pretty easy. So we have basically x squared times n factorial over n plus 1 factorial is n plus 1 times n factorial. 
And then we get to cancel out the factorial parts of this. So we got x squared over m plus 1. So any algebra questions on that? Now we're quickly going to put this into a limit. All right, what is this limit here? Zero. Zero. So you could write as x squared over infinity, but no matter what x is, as long as it's a number, you're going to get zero right here. All right, this is rho. It's a little strange when rho equals zero. Is zero less than one? Yes. Yep, it's way less than one. Does it matter what x is? Nope, x could be anything. So this is one of the uh, one of the two extremes. This means no matter what x is, our row is less than one. So row less than one for all x in the real numbers. So this converges negative infinity, positive infinity. And what is the radius of this interval? Yep, the radius will be infinity, which is half the length of the infinite interval, which is also infinity. There is the other extreme case where your row is greater than 1 no matter what x is, um, in which case it will converge only for the a value. That's the other extreme.